Okay, this is a tutorial on lighting. I'm in Blender 3.6. This should work in lots of other versions of Blender though. I'm going to make a new little 3D viewport down here at the bottom so I can preview this stuff pretty quickly. I'm going to make sure I'm in Cycles Render. I'm going to delete that default cube and instead I'm going to put in a monkey. Let's go into the number three side view. Rotate that. Let's press Control 2 to add some subdivision surface and smooth it. Just move her so she's sitting on that green line, more or less. All right, maybe in a front view and we'll rotate her so she's leaning on her ear. Okay, here she is in the camera view. If we look at it in the, by pressing Z and going up, we can see the render view. Let's put a plane underneath her. S20, here we go. Let's go into a top view here so we don't change the up and down variables or values. Rotate that a little bit. And let's add a third one. It's like looking right at us, pondering who we are. Okay, this is our still life in Suzanne's. Very nice. Let's give a material to these guys. Let's just take our floor, call it basic, and I'm going to just turn it down just a smidge so it's not quite so bright. Select my three monkeys, select the floor, control L, link materials. Okay, now they're all the same color or whatever else, but we'll keep it at a neutral color. Okay, this is our default view. Let's render this. Remaining time is 11 minutes. It won't actually take 11 minutes, but I'm going to cancel that. The reason I'm going to cancel that is because we're just going to change our max samples in our render sampling from 4096 to like 32. That'll go a lot faster. I've also found that when I'm rendering, sometimes my recording actually freezes up a little bit, so we don't want to take too long doing that sort of thing. So this, we're going to uh, press the letter N. Oops, make this a little bit wider. And I'm going to name our render slot here, default. This is our default point light, doing this light right here. So let's select our light, which is right there. And under our light settings here, which is going to be called data, yeah, we're going to increase our radius from 0.1 to like 3.5. Ah, very nice. Let's press F11 to get this window up. Let's go to our second slot and press F12. All right, that took 6.56 seconds. Here it is before, here it is after. I'm gonna call this point soft. Now, we change the radius. With a point light, you change the radius to make it soft, okay? Instead of a point light, let's change it to a sunlight. Well, immediately everything gets crazy bright. So let's turn our strength down to something like two. Let's change our angle to zero. F11, let's make a new window. Let's render that. All right, that took six seconds again. Let's call this sun, just with nothing next to it. Let's make a new, go into a new slot right off the bat, and let's increase our angle up. Now, angle for a sun is softness. For a point light, it's radius, and for a sun, it's angle, okay? There are good reasons, well, I don't know if they're good reasons, but there are reasons for that. Let's make it about 70. And I find that as the angle goes up with the sun, it tends to get darker. It's probably true for point lights as well. So I'm gonna increase the strength to about 2.5. Let's render that. 6.5 seconds, sun soft. So there's our sun, there's our sun soft. There's our point, there's our point soft. The main differences between the sun and the point is that point cares where you are. So it's brighter here, and it's darker here, okay? Whereas for the sun, it's brighter here. No, it's the same brightness here as it is here. Suns don't have position. In fact, if I took my sun and I moved it around, even though Cycles is gonna redraw because there's a transform, it doesn't actually change the look at all. But if this were a point light, we'll increase our wattage to 1,000. If I move my point light around, it changes like crazy. 
Okay, the point light tapers with distance. The intensity of the light changes with distance. That's a major difference between point and sun. However, if I went into the rotation value and like if I were to rotate this, which I'm doing right now, it doesn't change the look at all. Points have no rotation. Whereas if this were a sun, let's change the value to 2.5. If this were a sunlight and I were to rotate it, it changes like crazy because the sun doesn't care where you are, but it does care where it's pointing. Okay, I did that kind of quick, but those are the differences between the sun and the point light. A spotlight is just a point light where you limit the area that it's illuminating. That's all it is. And an area light, we're not going to do area lights today. So I don't know what to tell you. I use area lights, but uh, I tend to use suns. I really like sunlights a lot of the time. Okay, let's delete everything. And notice it's still illuminated. What is going on? I have no lights, but I have illumination. Well, let's make a new window here. Let's go into our shader editor and change it from object to world. And you will see right here the culprit, our background, our background color. Right now it's gray, has a strength of one. If I change it to like red, everything looks red. Let's undo that. Strength of one, change it to strength of zero, everything finally goes black. So the background is adding this kind of ambient illumination. It is illuminating things, right? Because you can see that I still have shading happening. I can still see my shapes. So they are responding a bit to light coming from different directions, but it's very, very ambient heavy. So you could create a light just using your background. You could light your scene. Just turn up your background, something like that. OK, let's look at some other ways to light this thing. Let's keep our world turned on for now. And let's make ourselves a new point light. So Shift A, Light, Point, GZ, move it up. Remember, we had like a strength of 1,000 here. And let's give it a radius so it's kind of soft, maybe 2.5. I'm going to move one light over here on the right side of the camera one light over here on the left side of the camera and maybe one light to the back of the camera this is called three-point lighting now generally one of the lights gives sharper shadows so we'll let that be our key light right here the light on the left which is our fill light would be much softer and the light in the back is actually used to make rim lighting. So to really make sense of this, I'm just going to hide our floor and two of our monkeys. going to press the letter H with them selected. I'm going to zoom in with my camera on this guy. Point lighting works real, or three point lighting works really, really well when you are just working on lighting a single, single thing. So if I turn, this will be our key light. So I'm going to call this key and this will be our backlight, so I'll call this back. And this will be our fill light, and I'll call it fill, F2 fill. All right, let's hide our fill and our backlight, and just look at our key light for now. And let's turn our world strength to zero. All right, that's our key light. Pretty exciting, huh? Let's look at our fill light. The purpose of the fill light is to fill in some of the dark areas that the key is leaving behind. A fill light tends to be pretty dim. Maybe 350 here. Maybe I'll move it up. Maybe I won't. I don't like this shadow from his eye thing, but I'm not going to worry too much about that because, you know, in the rest of the world, we don't see that very often. Again, the fill light tends to be on the opposite side from the camera, or of the camera, compared to the key light. I guess if I move my key light up, that might take care of that a little bit. Then I get some more shading down here. And sometimes you put in more fill lights. They call them bounce lights as well, where they put like a piece of foam core, a little piece of like white cardboard that bounces the light around. So you can do that kind of a thing, make this softer. You can go to town lighting this thing up. So we had a couple of fill lights. Let's look at our backlight. Kill the fills, kill the keys, turn on the back. The purpose of a backlight is to create some definition around the edges of your character that you're illuminating. So uh, tend to be pretty darn strong. I'm going to move that down a bit. Sometimes it's called a rim light, or I think I said a kicker. 
that's pretty good. Increasing the radius in this instance will simply increase the area that's being seen by it. If it's really, really small, you're only going to get that tiny, tiny rim. Bigger, you're going to catch a little more ears. You may want to make it brighter. Let's try 5,000. All right, so there it is with the fills. Here's our fill with our backlight. Here's our fill without our backlight. With, without, with, without. And let's move him down even more. Now because my key light is coming on the right side, I'm going to move my backlight so it happens over on the left side a little bit more. That's a little more interesting. And there's our key light, which is just doing a bit too much right now, so let's turn it down. And now we have a nice studio lighting set up for Suzanne. So there's a three-point lighting with no world lighting at all. If our world lighting were turned up, it doesn't do that much. Let's go F11, make a new slot. Render that. Oh, I want to turn off these three. There we go. Make them not renderable. This is visible in the viewport. That's visible in the render. Okay, so kind of a wonky example here, but get these guys back out here. So this is point three point. Took two whopping seconds to render that. So we can get some interesting kind of lighting effects on that from there. I don't think this is very useful for most of the stuff that I do, but you know, your mileage may vary. All right, turn on the renderability and the visibility of these other elements and let's add a sunlight. Sun. Move it up. Let's increase the angle to something like 30. And let's rotate this guy. This direction. Again, remember, I, I said move it up. It doesn't matter where you move it. The lighting's going to be the same. Okay, but sometimes I like to do this just for my own sanity, for visualizing it. I'm going to duplicate it and move another one that sort of points against that sunlight. Okay. Again, world is zero, so I'm responsible for all illumination. So without that second sun, things get really dark in the shadows, so this lightens up the shadows. Let's call this sky. Okay. It's going to be a two-point lighting setup that I'm going to be doing here. And it's sort of a universal two-point lighting setup because it reaches everywhere. I'm going to make the angle of my sky. In fact, let's turn off the sun for a minute. I'm going to make the angle of my sky be really, really big, like 120. OK, it almost looks like what we get with the world. And I'm going to give this guy a color of the sky, just a smidge, just a little bit of blue. OK, something like that. That's pretty good right there. Okay, let's bring in our sun. Now our sun, we want our angle to be smaller. We want this guy to actually cast some shadows. Go ahead and rotate this guy a little bit so we can see those shadows happening. Maybe something like that. We can increase the angle a bit. And this guy, rather than being white, we're going to make him the opposite of the blue, a complement. So we're going to move it into yellow. Now, wherever the blue and the yellow are both touching, you're going to get a pretty neutral color. Let's set our intensity of our sun to 2.5. Let's increase the intensity of our sky to like 1.5. So it looks fairly neutral, but if we only looked at the sun, it starts to get a little yellow. Not that yellow, does it? Well, I need to compare this with the sky. The sky is going to look blue, but when you put them together, it just it looks a little more neutral right looks a little more natural lighting wise okay this is a two-point lighting setup with sunlights all right let's render this give ourselves a new slot again world output is set to zero as I render this seven seconds Sun, two point. Let's compare it with the soft of our sun here. You'll immediately notice the color. The color makes a big difference here, doesn't it? It's just amazing. And here we've got warmer colors here, 
and cooler colors where the shadows are. So this is very blue, has a lot more blue, and this has some warmer colors, reds and yellows and things like that. Let's look at another way to light this. We can take our, well, let's get rid of our suns. Turn our background light on again, but this time we're gonna put in a texture. Texture, sky, texture. Sorry about that, move them down. Run our sky texture into the color and it takes off like crazy. And so we have to turn this down. So let's take our strength and take a point two. Let's change our sun intensity as well. Let's actually make this point one. And let's change our sun intensity to be like point one also. Okay, now we're getting a little more reasonable. We have our sun elevation, which is like how high in the sky the sun is. So if you set it to 90 degrees, the sun is directly overhead. I might change it to about, I don't know, maybe about there. What's that, 40 degrees? Rotation is rotation. Okay, move the sun around the sky. I'm going to set that to about 30 degrees. Altitude, to me, has the smallest impact on everything going on. Um, I think maybe when the sun is really low, by the way, you'll notice the color gets a little bit warmer, a little more golden hour as it gets near the horizon, which is pretty cool. I think as altitude goes up here, you can start to see the difference, um, and you might want to mess with that, but uh, not for me. I, t I tend to leave altitude alone. The difference is too subtle for me for the things that I'm doing. But if you really care, spend a lot of time with it. There are probably instances where it makes a big difference. Okay, air, dust, and ozone. These are dials that basically change the color and the intensity of the shadows. Air, I like to turn it up a bit. Dust, I turn it up a lot. I really like the effect of dust. It uh, kind of causes the shadows to lighten up as they get further away. I, I really like it. Ozone basically adds blue into the scene. So you can blue it up a little bit. Air yellows it up. So just find a combination that works pretty well for you. And finally, once you've got something you're happy with, we have sun size, which is, of course, sun softness. So you can control how soft those shadows from the sun are. And then we can tweak the intensity to something that you like. Of the sun, by the way, right? This is the intensity of the sun. The, I don't know if there's a way to control the intensity of the air. I think it's just the basic intensity, or the from the, the, the clouds. It's just the basic intensity, which you can control with the, the background power, the background strength. So you can control those two, the strength of the sun, the strength of the entire scene, which, so it's not, it's intuitive, but not like crazy intuitive. It gets a little weird at times. Okay, that's pretty cool. Uh, maybe I'll bring down the sun size a little bit so we've got a little bit of shadow from the sun. And uh, 0.15. Let's make a new slot for that. Let's render that. Okay, there's our sun. So we're going to call this oops, World Sky Texture. All right, let's compare where we've been. We got our default point. Just softening it up makes it look a lot nicer. We have our default sun, sort of. Softening that up makes it look a lot nicer. The two are very similar, except that the point tapers as you get away. The sun does not taper. I like using sun for lighting large scenes. You can do three-point lighting if you like. You can do two-point lighting with the sun, which I think is more interesting, and using some complementary colors. Now we're finally using colors. World Texture also uses colors. In some ways, it's kind of similar to what I'm doing with the two-point sun, but it's a little bit smarter, has some more features to it. So uh, it does strangely take a little bit longer to render. This took seven and a half seconds, whereas my sun took seven, 6.95 seconds. I just find sky texture takes a little bit longer. So if these things really start mattering, uh, beware the sky texture a little bit, but not a lot. It's not crazy. But again, we go from black and white to color, and you can start to see, oh, look, there's some blues here, and there's some less blues here, a little yellowy. There's some nice warm colors there. Same thing with the two-point. OK, let's move into our next slot. Let's try something else. Let's set our strength to 0. In fact, let's just remove that connection entirely. We are going to add a point light. Move that up. Set the intensity to 1,000. Let's move this about where it was where we began, which I think was around here somewhere. Maybe we can give it a radius of like, oh, not 20. Give it a radius of 3, I think we liked. And let's 
take our light, let's press Shift D to duplicate it, press X and 1. And Shift D to duplicate, X and 1. So we now have three lights that are all equal distances from each other. Let's take our first light and we're going to change its color to red. Take the second light, we're going to change its color to green. And the third light, you guessed it, blue. Red, green, and blue together make white. However, because these are point lights, they're not in exactly the same position, and so their shadows, kind of the color breaks apart a little bit where the shading is. Whereas if you just look at any single surface, you're basically going to get white. It won't be exactly white because a point light, again, tapers its intensity with distance, and so because they're not equidistant from any specific point, you'll get a little more red in this particular scene because the red is closer than the blue. If I rotated this 180 degrees, now the blue is closer, and so you get a little more blue because the red is a bit weaker because it's further away. R Z 180 let's go back to where red is closer. Let's name these real quick. Point R, F2, point G, and this guy is point B. Let's create a parent that holds these guys. Select the second one, Shift S, cursor to selected. Shift A, create an empty, make it a cube, scale that up. No, don't scale it, don't scale it. Change the size, we don't wanna mess with scale. Okay, the scale remains one. It's got this funky location. My center point has exactly the same location as the cube. These guys are pretty close, but the X value is off by, it's one more and it's one less than our cube, which is the same as the center light. Hopefully that makes sense. Let's select our center three lights, select our cube, control P to parent, but choose the bottom one, object, keep transform without inverse. What that does is it causes it to inherit the transforms of its parent. So the box has all this crazy location information, but if I select the center light, it has a location of zero and, and a weird rotation. Let's set that to zero. The location is zero because it's in the same location as its parent, and so is zero. This guy has a location of one because it's one blender unit on the x-axis away from the origin of the parent. This one is going to be negative one, and let's change that. So here we have negative one, zero, and one. This matters because what I'm going to do is I'm going to create some drivers. In other words, I'm going to create some little expressions, little pieces of code that cause these things to be linked together in various ways. And I need my locations to match up uh, in order to do that. Here's what we're going to do first. I want our radiuses, radii, to always be the same. So if I took my red radius and dialed it down, now I've got this crisp shadow from the red, which is creating a cyan shadow because cyan is the complement of red if you're into that kind of thing. But my green and blue shadows are still soft. Well, that's kind of weird. That's really not what I want. What I want to do is cause them all to be linked together. My red, I'm going to change the name a bit point R master. The red's going to be my master point. It's going to define all of these qualities. I'm going to right click on radius and choose copy as new driver. That's the term. Select the green, right click on radius and choose paste driver. Select that guy, paste driver. You see they changed to purple. So now when I, a driver basically says, okay, look at something and mimic it. So as I change my radius now, because that is the driver, you can see my radius is zero, the radius of all of them are zero. If I increase my radius to some ridiculously large amount, they all go to the ridiculously large amount. You can even see the radius change in the viewport as I do this. Super handy. Red selected, let's do that with power. Copy as new driver, select the center one. Notice that when the paste has a P under, the P is underlined. This is a dynamically generated hotkey set. It may not always be P depending on what options are available, but right now it is, so I can just press the letter P and that'll do it. Same thing here. It's not gonna change during this little session, so. That does those, so now if I change my power, if I go down to zero, they all go down to zero. If I go up to some ridiculously large amount, they all become the ridiculously large amount. Let's go 1500 for now. Now, when I move the red, away from the center. I want my 
blue to move in the opposite direction. Let's, that's a little bit trickier, but let's see what we can do. Right now, red's showing me negative one, blue is showing me positive one. So red, I'm going to try this. Let's try this. Copy is new driver, and blue, paste driver. But now blue is over here. That's not what we wanted. However, you can right click on any of these drivers and choose edit driver. This is the default setting. Down here, this is the variable. It's looking for the location of, you can see written in this little thing that pops up underneath it, point underscore r underscore master. So it's looking at point underscore r underscore master. It's looking at the location and the zero index. There's x, y, z, zero, one, two. It's looking for zero, which is x. So the x value of point underscore r underscore master, we're gonna call that location and it's taking the average value of all my variables and I'm only giving it one. I'm only giving it one variable. So it's gonna get negative one as a result. I can change it from average value though to scripted expression. Scripted expression, same thing down here and it's calling it location. My expression is location. Whatever this variable is, which is all this junk that is auto-generated, okay? Give me location. Well, location is negative one. Well, I can type some code into this guy here. First, I'm gonna put parentheses around it just for good measure. I'm going to type a negative sign before it. So in other words, I want the negative value of my location. So the negative of negative one, positive one. And it just changed to positive one. So now if I select this guy and move my x location, the blue moves opposite. See that? And I can put them right on top of the center and there's no color in my lower right corner. Or I move them away and there's lots of color as they spread apart. Now, I don't want my Y or Z values to change at all. I don't want my rotation or scale to change at all. Same thing with this guy. I could lock him too because he's on a driver. But if I tried to move this guy, it, it, wouldn't be, it wouldn't let me move him at all because it's a driver. So now if I press G, it only moves it along the X axis because my other axes are locked. So now I can pick the spread. I can pick the radius and I can adjust the intensity all with red. And then I can select my parent and I can do things like, remember how we rotated it? Well, I can just rotate the parent and they all rotate with it. Controlling which color is dominant. I can also move it around, changing the shadows and kind of the, you know, the intensity of the fall off in various areas and things like that. I can move it up and down. Obviously, this is no surprise. So let's just move this about where they were in the first place. Somewhere around here, I don't remember exactly. Rotate it till we get a kind of color we like. And maybe I'll move this red. Yeah, that's kind of cool. I think that kind of works how it was, more or less how it was. All right, let's render that guy. That only took seven and a half seconds. Took about the same as the sky texture. Yeah, everyone else is brighter. So let, let's let's increase our intensity on this guy. Easy to do. Select the red, set it to 2,500, maybe 3,000. Let's try that. Probably won't change our render time. We were 7.69 and we're exactly the same here. So we're gonna name this slot, we'll call it, um, point RGB, the RGB point technique. Cool. Let's add a new slot. So we're going to do the same thing, but now we're going to do it with sunlights. And I'm just going to go through the whole process from scratch. I don't want to convert these because I have drivers on things that won't show up in other things. It's not the end of the world to do it that way, but I'm just not going to do that. So let's, without really speaking much, I'm going to set this up real quick. Okay, now remember how we talked about how when you move the position of a sun lamp, it doesn't actually change the look at all. What does matter is the angle. So when everything's pointing parallel to each other, even though they're in different positions, you get a totally neutral lighting schematic. But when I move this, or not when I move it, but when I, when I rotate it, I get these differences. Okay, and that's how it is for any of these guys, not that guy. If I rotate blue, I get blue, and the complement of blue, which is yellow. So I'm, I don't want green to rotate. I want red to rotate. 
one direction and I want blue to rotate the opposite. And we're only going to do that along the Y axis. We're only going to rotate Y. So I'm going to lock down everything except for Y axis. For the green, I can just lock down everything. And for the blue, lock down everything except the Y axis. Actually, I could probably lock it because the driver. Let's not worry about that. Copy as new driver. Paste driver. Edit driver. Again, if I, if I move this guy now, they, they, they're in parallel with each other, so I need to make it do the opposite. So let's, let's uh, select this guy. Edit driver. Oops. Keep my mouse over the little box. Scripted expression. I like parentheses. Not required. Negative. That's it. Increase my angle. Increase my intensity. Of course, we're pointing straight down right now. So let's rotate it along the x-axis a little bit. Rotate in there. Now, these are some pretty extreme uh, variances of angle. But because my angle is so high, you don't really notice it. But, uh, but uh, Or my softness, I'll call that softness. But here you get some pretty insane color stuff, probably not what we want. However, if we do increase that angle a fair amount, bring this in, you get a really nice look. This is my preferred approach right here. I really like this approach. You could bring in some worlds without the sky to fill in a little bit there. Not a bad idea. But I really like this look. I don't have the point fall off that is a problem for larger scenes. It's not hard to build. And uh, it's just, it works really well, in my mind. This is the sun RGB. So there's our point RGB, sun RGB, world sky texture. Our three kind of color, oh, and then we have sun two point, which are our color options compared to what we thought was amazing when we went from this to this, but now we realized there was this all along. From that to that using this method. Now, do you have to build this every time? Not necessarily. Let's save our scene, rgbsun.blend. And uh, if I make a new project file, uh, let's go 3D viewport down here. Again, just so we can see. sure we're in cycles. Now we did save our previous project where we had this. You could save it somewhere special. Here's our cube sitting on the ground. Very simple stuff. I'm going to press F3 append. And I'm going to choose, I'm going to go to my desktop. I'm going to choose that RGB sun. I'm going to go into object. I'm going to choose RGB and I need its parent, which I didn't name in any intelligent way, but it's called empty. I probably should have named it like RGB parent or something. I'm going to click append. I'm going to take my old light, which came in here by default. I'm going to delete that. And I'm going to go into the world just here and change the intensity of my world to zero. So now if I don't have my lights, the RGB lights, everything's black. Here's my RGB. And I got it. Let's see if it all works. I can rotate and everything moves with it. And the drivers, here's my red, my drivers are still intact. So I built it once and I didn't have to build it again. I've got it here, my little lighting setup, which I should name this RGB parent probably or something like that. Oops. I've got this really, really nice, I mean, that's a, that's a great lighting setup. It's just a nice lighting setup um, with very little effort. Even if you have to build it, it doesn't take that much time. So there it is. Uh, lots of lighting options for you. Hopefully this was helpful. Um, and uh, good luck.